Hey guys, so today we're going to be scouting a new location with some turtle researchers and we are hoping to find alligator snapping turtles in this area. So we're going to be snorkeling through a large stretch of the river and seeing what animals we can encounter. Uh, we're going to find a lot of turtles, all kinds of things like that, all kinds of turtles, fish, uh, maybe we'll get lucky see an alligator, but the main thing we're trying to find today are alligator snapping turtles. Diving the river out here is definitely one of my favorite things to do. Check out these huge bass hanging out up underneath this tree fall right here. So what we do when we're looking for the alligator snapping turtles is we check underneath a lot of these tree falls and just try to explore in all these kind of nooks and crannies they might hide. Now as I was looking under this one, look what I found. Check this out. So this is a deer skull that I found on the bottom right here. So you can actually see the antlers sticking up or you know what used to be an antler right there. And so that's pretty neat, but you know, I'm here for the turtle. So we just go ahead and drop that and move on and see what else we can find. Now throughout this whole day, we find lots of turtles. So this is a big Swanee River turtle right there. And uh, we see a lot of these ones. These are very large, beautiful turtle species. And then there it goes, I think that's a yellow belly slider swimming off right there into the distance. There are very common turtle species for us to see in this area. Now I'm just kind of looking around, exploring amongst all the rocks, fallen logs, lots of cool fish swimming around as well. And we try to get up underneath some of these logs and on my camera rig, I have some lights you can see turned on right there. And so we look into these hollows and look around and just try to see if there's anything hiding inside of any of these areas. And so this is kind of where the alligator snappers like to be. Like that log right there is a perfect looking spot for one to be able to hide out in. But I go over, I check, of course, nobody's home except the fish but that's the whole idea of the day is just checking out all these little kind of spots where they may be able to hide cram up in there during the day now at night they're more active they might be out on the move and we have done a night dive in this area before we actually did a video on that last year which is pretty epic but this year we're doing a daytime search now here's a cool little turtle shell fossil on the bottom and so throughout the day I find dozens and dozens of these so I just kind of drop that one because there's so many of them out here but as we're looking around for these live turtles the bottom is covered in fossilized turtle shell pieces they're really really common in this area. Now here I come up on a group of basking Swanee River turtles hanging out up on these logs trying to catch some sunlight on this kind of cloudy day. So I'm going to see if I can sneak up and get a slightly closer look at them. But uh, by the time I get over there most of them have already dipped down. And then here's the one big female still hanging out on the top right there. Look how pretty she is. Now, like I said earlier, the alligator snappers really like these big tree falls. So I actually climb in underneath this one. And this is a huge tree fall and a lot of space up under here. And it's all dark and creepy and full of some cool fish at least. But it's just a mess of branches in here. And it makes it really hard to search for the turtles. And of course, there's alligators out here too. So you have to be very, very aware. Obviously, I love alligators. I know how to handle alligators, but that only works so well as if you were to see it coming. So when I'm creeping around underneath these areas, it can get pretty darn thick. And you can see this is what it looks like from the surface with this big old tree fall, a bunch of water hyacinth crammed in there. And uh, my goofy looking mug looking at the camera, make sure it's still working. And then we're gonna hop back down in there and see if we can see anything else. Now, it's also a concern when you're underwater like this, uh, I'm holding my breath, right? So if I were to somehow get like jammed up between some branches or stuck in there, you can drown. And so uh, again, this is where I like to remind everybody, you know, don't go do this, please. <laughs> okay, this stuff is uh, kind of dangerous. So I don't recommend trying to do this on your own, not only for the uh, alligators, but also just because it is dangerous as a drowning hazard to be up in these areas you can't see it's real thick and tight and full of branches and easy to get yourself stuck now once i kind of find my way through and come out on the other side of this tree fall it opens up a little bit better you see a lot of fish in there too but you can really see how this thick habitat and vegetation can make a perfect hiding place for an alligator snapping turtle to be hanging out during the day and then it'll come out at night and wander around and try to feed now once we got into a sandy area, I noticed a few of these little patches on the bottom. And so these are nests made by this sunfish right here. And so they will uh, dig this little area out and then they will protect their little nesting site from other fish coming through. Like, look at this right there. Ooh, get out of here. My spot. 
So that's really cool. And so they'll sit there and they'll protect their little sandy nesting spots. After a few hours of searching in the river and not really seeing much, we decided to check out one of the nearby springs and have a little bit of a break. And if you look up there, you can see where the spring water is mixing with the river water. So that blue water mixes up with that kind of ugly water from the river. Now I'm free diving down, holding my breath into one of the springs. As I get down, it gets pretty dark and hard to see, but I wanted to take a quick look at it, check it out, and then I'm just going to have to uh, rock it back up to the surface up there. But take a look at just the way the walls look. It's so cool. So this is the Florida aquifer right here. I mean, just exposing out onto the surface of the river. And here in Florida, we're so lucky to have these springs. They're a real jewel out here and a spot that a lot of people don't know a lot about. And so, well, I mean, I kind of want to keep it that way because they're so cool, especially when there's not that many people in them. But at the same time, it's such an amazing amazing place I also want to share with you guys because they're so beautiful and so amazing to see. And you can also see, look at that water difference right there, right? So river water on the left, spring water on the right. You can really see that difference in the coloration. Now the river water is darker due to tannic acid. Once I'm back up on the surface, I borrow my friend's handheld flashlight and head on back down there to be able to see a little bit better into the cavern. Earlier, I was using my onboard lights on my big camera rig, but this is way too tight of a space going down into the cavern. So right now I just have the GoPro in one hand separated from the rest of the camera rig and then the flashlight in the other. And check that out. How cool is that, huh? These underwater caves are absolutely amazing and it's blasting me out. I, you can't really tell in the video, but that water is rushing out and pushing me out in a way and it carries me back up to the surface. Now, a lot of people actually go cave diving. They scuba dive and head all the way down there in there, which is something I've never done. I've always been pretty curious about it. I really want to try to do it, but it's also really dangerous. And so for right now, I just stick with the free diving. And speaking of freediving, I have my awesome little freediving watch from Cressy on me. And so if we check out my watch, it says I was 40 feet deep for 44 seconds. So it's a nice little free dive right there. So before we get back to the river and back to the job at hand, which is of course looking for the snapping turtles, I wanted to check out one last cavern. And so take a look at this one. Man, it is so cool. I love it. I have really got to get into this cave diving thing. I'm just fascinated by it. But look at that sign. It's really hard to see. You guys see it right there. My flashlight's on it. That sign is the warning sign for divers. And it says, do not go beyond this point. And it is very dangerous. And they've had several people die down there. So maybe I'll hold off on the uh, cave diving thing. Once we're back on the river though, it's a lot more clear because this part of the river is really being fed directly from that spring water. So if you notice, the clarity is much, much better and the color's different as well. So this is a male Swanee River Turtle cruising away. I can tell it's a male because it has that big old tail back there. So it's usually a pretty clear indicator. And then uh, with most of the aquatic turtles you'll see, at least in Florida, if you see a very large individual, that's usually a female. And then there's some more bass swimming around. There's actually a few different kinds of bass in this area, although I am not an expert on that whatsoever, so I'm not even gonna try to guess. But we can still look around and explore a little bit more. This is a beautiful area. Now that it is being fed by that spring water, it's much more clear. Here goes another turtle swimming off up there. And then a nice school of smaller fish hanging out as well. Then I see this big shadow on the bottom. Look at this, guys. This is a huge long-nosed gar. This is the largest long-nosed gar I've ever seen in my life. And I had already seen a few of this species today, but this one is absolutely massive. Now you can see that right there. Those are the strobes on my camera as I'm trying to get a few shots of the fish as it goes to swim off. But man, that is a massive long-nosed gar. Now it's not an alligator gar, that's a different species, okay? So this is a long-nosed gar. And uh, this one is just really impressive. So we've had a pretty exciting day so far, a lot of really cool wildlife, but still no alligator snapping turtle. After hours of searching, it can definitely get discouraging when you don't find your target, but look how beautiful it is out here. So, I mean, that's really what I take solace in, is just how gorgeous it is, and I love being out here and just spending time in the water like this, exploring, having a look around. It's just such an incredible 
incredible area, and we're so lucky to have areas like this that are not often explored. Now here's a beautiful rocky outcrop underneath the water, and this seems like a really good spot for a turtle or any other wildlife to hang out really. So I started exploring around and looking around, and then I see all this rubble on the bottom. And uh, so look at that, it's actually a turtle shell piece, fossilized, a really big one. And then I find something that's, uh, what, what is that? Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Okay. <laughs> Next, I find this fossilized vertebrae. Check that out. I don't know what that came from. Uh, I sent it to some friends and uh, they weren't able to find out either. And then this looks like a fossilized uh, piece of bone as well. So there's quite a few fossils down here on the river bottom. And speaking of fossils, here's a living fossil. This is a bowfin, a very primitive species of fish. The bowfin is the sole surviving member of its order, an order that dates all the way back to the Jurassic. So these are really, really cool fish, and you can just imagine these guys swimming alongside dinosaurs, and basically very similar to what they look like today. So here I find a deeper section of the river, and uh, most of the river is relatively shallow for the most part, but in this piece right here I found it's about 20 feet deep. And so I decided to uh, free dive down and see what I can see on the bottom. These deeper sections can be a good spot for wildlife to hang out. Sometimes large fish like to be in these deeper spots, or of course, as I'm hoping, maybe a big turtle. But uh, as I'm looking around, it's also a place where things begin to collect on the bottom a lot more. And so as I'm looking around, I see a few fossils on the bottom, such as this large piece of an extinct tortoise shell that's fossilized. And then this is an aquatic turtle shell piece that's fossilized as well. But it's not just the fossils that collect in this deep spot. Unfortunately, look at all that garbage. A bunch of cans and beer cans, stuff like that. Just really, really sucks to see that and be such a beautiful area and just have trash all over the place. So again, guys, keep a hold of your trash if you're out boating. Don't throw trash in the river, please. I then spot another large Swanee River turtle basking on a log, so I do my best to see if I can creep up and get a shot of this one. So the turtles are often curious when you swim up like this. I don't really know what's going on, but uh, this one got spooked and decides to uh, take a dip after it takes a minute to check me out. And then down the other side, you see a zip away underwater right there. I then get another brief encounter with the long-nosed gar, and you can see the flashing of my strobes right there as I'm trying to get some photos of them. Now, the long-nosed gar are really, really cool. I love to see these guys. Uh, they're not a dangerous fish species, so don't worry. And then here's another large Swanee River turtle. This is a big old female right there. I know it's a female from that large dome shell, has a shorter tail, and just kind of the general look of the animal is definitely a female. But then, right after this, things get really exciting, guys. I don't know if you guys can hear me through the case, but like literally on the 11th hour, <laughs> we've been out here. Jeremy just, there he is. He just spotted a huge alligator snapping turtle up inside of a hole, okay? And I mean, it's it's like six, I think it's uh, about 6 p.m. We started out here at uh, like 9.30. <laughs> and we're just heading in and he just spotted. After hours and hours and hours of searching, we finally find what we're looking for. And it may not look like much, but in this dark little hole in the wall, right as the sun is starting to set, there it is, a massive alligator snapping turtle. The alligator snapping turtle is the largest freshwater turtle in North America and one of the largest in the world. Some records have these guys over 200 pounds. Now this one right here is not a record size, but it's still a very large turtle and we estimate this one to be well over 100 pounds itself. This is the largest alligator snapping turtle I've ever seen, including the ones I've seen in captivity. This thing is absolutely massive. And Jeremy, the researcher I'm with today, he's been doing this for a very long time, and he says he thinks this is probably the biggest one he's ever seen too. Just a huge one. Now you see it slowly turn away from us. You know, we're looking at it with the light right there, so it's gonna slowly turn away, and then it just ends up going back in there and just completely disappearing on us. So. Enjoy this brief view of it because it's the last one that we get. Okay, so it's in there. It's over 100 pounds. It's it's massive, huge alligator snapping turtle right here, right next to me, and I can't get to it. <laughs> it's too far in there. There's like a like a beaver dam or something going up. Like there's some kind of big burrow, and it goes way in there. Uh, I mean, I crawled in there, and like it it goes far back. So. 
Here's this massive turtle right here and I can't get any photos or video of it because it's just so far in there and it's all stirred up now. It's so exciting and so frustrating at the same time because we're so close. It's right there and I just can't get to it and I want to cry. Ah, it's right there guys. It's in there.